I'm up for this afternoon session. Uh, Dwayne Llewellyn with the Tool Library. I actually have two purposes today. One is to let you know about the Tool Library, which is something, an asset or resource that we've leveraged for tune-up service providers. So I know some of you have already familiar with the library or using tools in the library. So uh, thank you. Um, but the second part of what I'm going to go over is some curriculum that was developed by Pacific Northwest National Labs on really kind of getting into, we've kind of danced around the edges of the actual scope of work for doing a tune-up. I'm going to cover that. So I'm going to get into the, the director's rule, what the requirements are, what you need to look at, what's mandatory, what's voluntary, <laughs> and there'll be time for questions and we can get to all of that when we do that. Um, so I do want to recognize Seattle, the Office of Sustainability and the Environment for sponsoring the Tool Lending Library through this process, but we also have other sponsors. Um, the, the Tool Library initially was funded by the Washington State Department of Commerce. They gave us a grant to purchase all the tools that I'm going to talk about, um, but they gave us no operating funds. They said, here, we'll give you the tools, you figure out how to sustain a library. Um, and so uh, we were fortunate here in the last year or two to actually get sponsors for the tool library. So Energy Trust of Oregon, I know we're not do talking about the tune-up requirements in Oregon, but we ship tools to Oregon. Um, Energy 350, which is a, a, a firm, uh, Seattle Chapter, uh, Puget Sound Energy, Seattle City Lights, Snohomish County PD, all sponsor the tool lending library. So if you're doing work outside of this tune-up process, Everett, Olympia, Spokane, the tool library is available to you regardless. Um, we've got some special relationships here with the tune-up provider, but uh, just wanted to mention that. I am the director of the tool lending library. My wife, Carol, is the librarian, so we kind of tag team on this part-time here at the Smart Building Center. So what, what do we have in our library? We have 85 types of diagnostic tools, about 1,000 pieces. Um, we have an online reservation system, so you can reserve the tools online. I'll show you that. We just updated our reservation system on January 1st, so we'll talk about that. You can borrow these tools free of charge up to four weeks. If you need them longer than four weeks, that's fine. We've got a couple of, of studies going on right now where we've got tool loans out as long as six months because they wanted to get a good month or two baseline information and then afterwards, but we can talk about that. Uh, you can pick up all the tools are located right here in this building across the hall. So this is our bricks and mortar place. We're open. Somebody's always here manning the store nine to four, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So even if you didn't get a chance to go online and reserve a tool, you can swing in. I'll give you a laptop. We can <clears throat> get you registered and reserve the tools. And there's no cost for doing that. So as long as we have these sponsors and we continue to get the support, then there'll be no fee for that. Um, I do want to do want to talk about it's we, we up until the first of the year we had a fairly cumbersome process for reserving tools. You had to fill out a tool request form and then you had to go to a, our app. So we have an app now. We've now embedded that that app right in our website. So we've made it a lot easier. We've eliminated one of the steps of the tool loan. So I thought probably the best way, rather than showing you slides of the process, was to actually go to the app and show you how to do that. So. Go back to the web page here, and I'll, if I can find it, all the way back at the beginning. Oops, went past. Where's our website there? Uh, da -da -da -da. Home page. So if you're interested in borrowing tools, you're going to want to go to the Smart Building Center homepage. Um, a, you know, the Smart Building Center is a project of the Northwest Energy Efficiency Council. You're in our training and event space here. This space is available to building industry at the built environment. So uh, for using free of charge. So if you're thinking about having an ASHRAE meeting, an AEE meeting, a BOMA meeting, WISHI, WABO, um, then they use these spaces. Uh, and this is really a space where people can come and collect and we can talk about the built environment. You can, uh, there's a tab on here for using our space. It's a Google calendar. We also have an executive conference room down the hall, seats about 25. So if you're looking for having a meeting out of the office just to get away, 
beautiful conference room, fully AV capable. So you can go to meeting, you can broadcast meetings, conferencing, all that kind of stuff. Same thing with this space here. We actually have 1080i camera where we could uh, webcast a meeting and do that type of thing or a training session. Uh, once you go to the Smart Building Center, you just go to the tool library button here. Um, and uh, I'll go over our policy in a second here, but um, an agreement. But if you click on a browse inventory, now we've actually embedded our tool application right in our website. This used to be a separate site that you'd have to go to and get that. We now have embedded it right in our site. So in this, in this inventory is essentially, this is a, an application called MyTurn that we subscribe to and it's a it's a share one of these sharing economy applications so you can go and see all the tools that are available um, you'll see that some tools are in stock some tools are due i haven't logged in so there would be other information here there's a list of uh, categories over on the left hand side there airflow meters um, some of the stuff that we'll be talking about so for example, infrared cameras, I can go to the infrared camera and uh, we can look at what's available. I brought the TI Texas Instrument camera here. Um, the Fleur E40 is going to Steven at the end of the day today. So, uh, so you can look and there's a calendar. You can click on that device. If you click on what you want to borrow, then you can look and say, okay, here's all the specifications about it. This camera is Wi-Fi compatible yada, yada, yada. Uh, if you break it, it's $4,000. We do have a, our policies are essentially, you know, um, if you injure yourself in the use of the tools, you get, you can't sue us. Um, we want you to be safe and follow all public uh, law. We have a lot of power tools, so licensed electricians, that type of thing. But you can look at that. Um, we also have, you know, so uh, you would uh, log, create an account, log in, select the tools, and basically fill a cart. So it's very similar to a process that you would see at Amazon. Um, once you've done that, you would make arrangements to pick up the tools. You can pick them up here or I'll ship them to you. So if your office is in Bellingham or locally, we can ship them to you. You're responsible to ship them back. Um, but we've really streamlined our process, having our tool library right in our website and you can just go back to the inventory page and see the different categories that we have here. Some of the tools are pretty popular, like we have ultrasonic flow meters. I can find hydronic meters here. So these are two ultrasonic flow meters. They're just about checked out one right after another. These are about a $15,000 instrument. For measuring hydronic flows. I have transducers for two inch and larger pipe, so that would be something to check, but um, they're pretty popular. And so if you're thinking about needing to use that as part of your tune up process, verify flows, um, you're going to want to get on the waiting list or at least reserve in advance so that you can be secured the tool. So that's that's a main change I wanted to show. So what I'm hoping is, is every anybody can become a member. So when you become a member, you create an account, sign in here, put in your username, submit. It's very easy, no cost. So it's just like getting your library card. Once you get your library card, then you can reserve and fill up your cart. Um, I generally will follow up with you then, hey, I noticed you're getting all these tools. Um, when you go to, uh, we have a new, a new feature on a, on a project. Uh, information. So it'll ask you to basically enter some information about the tool use. So once you go ahead, go to the checkout process, you're going to be asked to complete some information about the project. Uh, I will ask you, so if it's associated with the tune-up, then put that in the project. Just say, hey, this is, I'm doing this, I'm using this tool. We have no way of specifically having a category for the Seattle tune-up project, but in the descriptor of the project, if you put in a tune-up, then I'll be able to disaggregate that information. We do want to kind of track the use of the tools and if it's being used for this particular project or a retro commissioning project or an industrial project. Um, but you'll be asked to, you'll also be asked to accept the tool, the customer policy and agreement. 
you only have to do that once. Once you become a member and you agree to our terms and conditions, you only have to go through that process once. So the first time you borrow a tool, you'll acknowledge our terms and conditions and our policies, and then you won't have to do that again. You will have to complete the project information. And so uh, go ahead and complete that. Let us know that it's part of the tune-up uh, process. Just to give you an idea, um, last year we loaned out about 1,400 tools. Um, about 50%, of, almost 60% of those are service providers. So energy service companies, contractors, um, about a third of them were building owners, RCMs, resource conservation managers, building owners, Unico, properties, that type of thing. And about 5% were utility folks. I got to go back to slideshow. So anyway, go to Smart Building Center. I will also uh, recommend here is you can sign up for our blog, SBC blog. We don't blog a lot, so we're not going to inundate you every day with a blog. But we do have trainings. Um, we've got a training coming up in March that I'll talk about a little bit later about cooling towers. We try to get the tool manufacturers in to do a training on the use of the tools. We've had Fluke come in and talk about it. We've had Dent come in and talk about their power meters. So if you sign up for a blog, you'll be notified of those, those training sessions. They're typically free, a couple hours. Um, I've got some demonstrations, uh, uh, models, some props that we can set up and measure air flows and water flows and electrical metering and that type of stuff. So if you sign up for our blog, you'll be notified of those, those training opportunities. I mentioned our tool system. You can pick it up here Tuesday through Thursday at the, at the Smart Building Center, or we'll ship it to you. You're responsible to ship it back. I mentioned our, our, our policies. Basically, we're not liable for damages. You know, if you hurt yourself in the use of the tool, that's on you. Um, you know, our power and flow meters, these tools aren't meant to be, you know, we do provide calibration certificates if you request them, um, but they're not, our power and flow meters are not revenue grade. We don't want to get in a situation where we're using our tools to bill customers based on that data. Um, the tools are available on a first come, first serve basis. So if you've got a project out, I suggest you get a reservation in. You, you know, it's just like anything, there's a calendar and you can reserve the tools in the future. We do have a lot of line voltage electric power metering tools, and so those need to be installed by a licensed electrician or somebody that's qualified to do that. Um, occasionally, we have some tools. I mentioned our ultrasonic flow meters. They're worth about $15,000. Um, if I don't know you or your organization or much about you, I may request a certificate of insurance. You know, if it's somebody that I know that, you know, you're, and we're kind of on the honor system here. This is, we modeled this tool lending library off of a couple of utility models in California, Southern California, Edison, Pacific Gas and Electric, San Diego Gas and Electric have had tool lending libraries for their customers for over 20 years. This is kind of a unique model. This is one of the only models in the United States that's a statewide initiative. And now we're in Washington and Oregon. And so, um, and so we're kind of on the honor system here. And we, and in reality, after two years of operation, we've lost a few data loggers. So nothing. We've we fried a couple of meters. Uh, we had an electrician install some of our power meters in an underground vault at Crystal Mountain. Um, because they needed to do a power survey because they were going to put in snowmaking equipment. Well, the vaults filled up with water, um, and the meters filled up with water. So, um, but that's okay. All the tools are insured. So, if you know somebody breaks into your car and steals the flow hood or the infrared camera, we can we can cover that with our insurance. As part of our work here with the uh, with the tool with the uh, tune-up process. One of the tasks I did was put together a diagnostic tool packages. So in your blue folder, if you go to kind of towards the end of that on the right side of your packet, there is a, a, a matrix here, if you will, of it's just a spreadsheet simply 
of different assessment elements. There's five pages there. Um, and, and what I've put together is I essentially align this with the, the tune-up process. So over on the left column here, you have the assessment. And I'm going to be going through these assessments uh, a little bit later here, but there's about 23 individual assessments. So on the left column here, you have the actual assessment. I have a diagnostic approach, or how would you verify that the equipment is conforming to the start, that the equipment schedule matches occupancy, for example? Well, we could use a motor logger. We could put a logger on a motor. I thought I had one out here. Here's a motor logger, and I can log when does the fan start, when does it stop, does that match occupancy? Is it running on the weekends when nobody's there? So I've got basically a diagnostic tool application, and I've gone through all 23 of the assessment elements. And so if you're looking at a way of verifying one of the assessment elements, you can look at this diagnostic tool matrix, um, or call me and just say, I'm trying to verify uh, whether or not my boiler reset is working based on outside air temperature. And I've actually have a written procedure on how to do that, a very specific procedure on how to use data loggers to verify whether your boiler reset is working. Now you may have a building automation system and you can trend that. If you don't have a building automation system, I can set up loggers and show you how to do it. And so, um, so that's kind of a reference that we've added for part of this tool for the tune-up requirement are these diagnostic tool packages to go through each of the assessment elements. So there's four basic areas of assessment in the tune-up requirements. There's HVAC, which is really the bulk of it. And really when it gets it's down to, a lot of it is controls related. Um, there's lighting, domestic hot water, and water. So those are the four key areas. Envelope is also an area, and I'll talk about that later. Um, that's a voluntary thing to look at, but we'll talk about that in the assessment elements. And so, you know, what kind of tools are the, do we have available to help you or resources um, to figure these stuff? So we talked about start-stop schedules. So how do we verify start-stop? You can log start-stop with your building automation system. We'll talk about that later. We can use a motor logger. Has anybody used a motor logger before? Very simple device. It essentially, it senses or it measures the stray magnetic field from electric motor. So once you get it on a motor, it will record runtime. And it'll, it'll tell you when a motor stops, starts, when it stops. So if you're thinking that the exhaust fans are going off and you want to verify that the exhaust fans are being turned off during the unoccupied mode, you can put this next to the motor and it'll give you a very precise schedule as when does that match occupancy? Is that running over the weekend? There's other ways that we could field verify that. I mentioned we have power monitoring equipment, both dent and fluke. These measure single and three phase. These are energy loggers. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, has anybody used a dent logger before? So there's, there's a couple advantages. There's advantages to both. The onset motor logger basically just gives you an on-off, so it'll calculate hours. Um, the dent is more sensitive. Their, um, their uh, sensor is more sensitive, so it'll give you on-off. It'll also give you the strength of the magnetic field. So if you're using a variable speed drive, it'll actually show you a little bit of the curve. So you can know whether the motor is slowing down or speeding up. The other thing I found with the dents, the dents are a lot better with ECM motors. ECM motors don't have as much stray losses. And the dent, you can set, has a little sensitivity screw here. And you can increase the sensitivity. With the onset motor, you basically have to get that thing right on the motor in order, on an ECM motor in order to sense it. Where with the dent, you can get it close, like on the outside of a VAV box. I can sense an ECM motor with the dent, and I can't with the onset. So the dent has a little higher sensitivity level. Um, verifying set points, that's an assessment element. Um, you know, does the set point make sense? And I'll be going through more on when we get to the assessment elements, is, is that, you know, <clears throat> retro commissioning light, 
So we're, you, we're relying on your judgment to, to determine whether these set points make sense. Are they generally accepted principles? So whether that's zone temperature, supply air temperature, boiler supply water temperature, chilled water reset, outside air temperature, mixed air temperature, economizer high limit, what I would call our critical sensors. Um, you know, if you want to feel, verify those, um, we've got a, a wide variety of tools to help you do that. We've got hand, handheld tools for measuring temperature, humidity, that time of space. Um, I have a really, this is a Fluke 975. It's a thermal anemometer. Um, and what's nice about that tool is, is that it'll measure temperature. It'll measure airflow. Um, but it also, and it measures CO2 levels and CO all in one tool. Um, what's also nice about it is that you can use that to calculate the percentage of outside air ventilation. By simply, if you measure the return air temperature, the mixed air temperature, and the outside air temperature in an air handling unit, it'll calculate percentage outside air for you. So if you're trying to verify how much, what percentage of outside air, measure return air, outside air, mixed air, mixed air generally at the filter bank after the mixing box on a unit and it'll give you a percentage of outside air. Um, we've got other types of loggers that we can be used, temperature loggers. Um, this is a four channel logger that uses external sensors. So we can install uh, external pipe sensors. So boiler water supply, hot chilled water supply reset, condenser water temperatures, supply and return and we can log those and verify whether our schedules are occurring or not. Um, sensor calibration, it's not, I'm, I'll show you some statistics here, and we're not requiring that you run around and verify sensor on every room thermostat. Um, but there are some critical sensors in systems that initiate control action, like outside air temperature. That's a fairly easy one to check. You can look on your smartphone and look what the outside air temperature is. Is that what the sensor is showing? Right, so am I close? Am I in the ballpark? There's some other things, there's flow sensors out there uh, or differential pressure where we actually are using those settings to control pump speed, fan speed. And so we've got some different tools for doing that. This is a Vaisala, this is an industrial grade temperature, humidity and CO2 meter. meter. So if you're wanting to set CO2 sensors or calibrate a CO2 sensor, this is very fast responding. If anybody's used CO2 sensors before, they tend to respond very slowly. This is fast response, accurate. So something that you could use to calibrate. Same thing with, I've got an insertion flow meter. So if you've got a one inch full port ball valve, you can insert this in um, and do flow. It's got a data acquisition suite on it too. And then the uh, ultrasonic flow meter. Airflow measurements, we'll talk about some of the requirements on airflow, there's some, some, some both mandatory and, and uh, voluntary requirements there. Uh, we've, I've got flow hoods. So if you're just looking at some balancing issues, um, some manometers, if you're looking at pressurization issues, building pressurization, that type of thing, vein anemometers, thermal anemometers, CO2. So do my, my CO2 sensor, does it match what's being shown? Lighting levels, so there's some general lighting requirements that'll go in. Um, we can measure light levels. We can log light levels. So if you wanna know when the lights are on, when the lights are off, um, we can log occupancy and lighting. Are the ox sensors working? What's the delay? So set these up on a one minute interval and it'll tell you what the delay is, which is an opportunity for savings, by the way, skinning down the delays. Um, a lot of people don't, they're preset at the factory at certain intervals, 30 minutes, 20 minutes. If you've got LED lighting like we have here, you can be really aggressive with five minute delays. Um, light level meters, we have that. Um, Richard was talking about bal uh, fixtures. If you don't know whether it's, you know, they're, we did a walkthrough of a building as part of this training up the street here at, uh, and uh, they had T12 lamps and magnetic ballasts. Um, but here's a ballast checker. I don't know if anybody's used one of these. Hold it on the fixture. We'll tell you whether it's a magnetic or electronic 
ballast. So you can incorporate that into your watts calculations. On hot water, just a matter of taking water temperature. Um, or on recirculating systems, does the pump run match occupancy schedule or is it running 24 seven? That's a common one. It is a fractional horsepower pump, so not a lot of energy, but um, it is something to uh, keep in mind. Um, and I'll go over into, into water usage when we get into the details of, of the assessment of requirements. But one of the things for cooling towers is conductivity. Uh, most cooling towers control blowdown by conductivity with a conductivity sensor. And those manufacturers recommend that those sensors be calibrated every six months to annually. Um, and it's rarely that that happens, that they're calibrated that often. Um, so we have a conductivity meter. What, what I do is before I loan this out, I will calibrate it with a known solution. So I know the conductivity of that solution and then you can use it in the sump of the tower and measure the conductivity of that. We can also look at uh, motor loggers for irrigation pumps, uh, that type of thing. Multimeter for rain sensors, making sure that rain sensors are working correctly. So there's some ways, some tools that we have available on the water usage side. So um, any questions about tools, the tool lending library? This is available to you. You're in this industry. If When these tools are inside my file cabinets, they're not saving any energy. So I need to get them out of my file cabinets into your hands. And so take advantage of that. Um, I have 100 of these. So if you need 40 Hobo U12s, I have them. So don't be shy about uh, an enormous request uh, on that. If you need them more than four weeks, let me know. Um, that's fine. I do look and see if somebody's reserved it after you and say, hey, I need it back by the 20th or something like that. But, um, but they're for you to use. So any questions? I didn't see a blower door. We do not have a blower door. And specifically because when we first kind of built out the library, we were kind of geared to commercial industrial. Um, and uh, so we do not have a blower door, so we're not doing blower door testing. Although um, I'm going to, I'm trying to make arrangements with um, Phil Emery at Newdorfers. Anybody know Phil? So Phil this fall is going to come in and do kind of a air barrier testing 101 course for us. Um, and talk about blower door testing and everything. Um, but it, I've also been talking to him about doing what I call a poor man's blower door, which is essentially putting the, the building in a negative. So turning off the supply fans, turning every exhaust fan, relief fan, your economizer fan, putting your building into extreme negative pressure. Nobody's there. And then running around with an infrared camera from the inside and finding air leakage. Um, has anybody done that before? I use smoke sticks. A smoke stick, same outside, thing. Outside, the same so I yeah, you need you need about a 20 degree temperature <laughs> differential for that to make sense, but it's a way that you can identify air leakage without having without pressurizing or depressurizing the building and using a thermal imaging camera to find the air leaks and document them. Um, but yeah, we don't have blower doors. Any other question? Good questions. There is, there is, there, it's a, has anybody installed an ultrasonic flow meter? It's a complicated instrument. You know, the first time is probably going to take you an hour to two hours to set it up. Second time is an hour. The third time is 45 minutes. And then you kind of get, um, we do not. Um, we have, there are in our, uh, I'll just, let me go back to the web page here. In our tool library here, and you look at tool resources, we have YouTube. <laughs> so you're in the field and you've got your smartphone, you can launch your YouTube application. So we have a YouTube video on how to set up the FlexSim, for example, the ultrasonic flow meter. Um, and we also have a lot of other, um, when we were putting the when we were putting the tool lending library together, Pacific Gas and Electric was very generous and allowed us to um, 
to download a lot of their reference documents for how to use the tools. And so we have quite a bit of mechanical, how to, how to use data, uh, data loggers to assess economizer performance. Um, also recently I've been working with the City University of New York in their building performance lab. And they actually have recently printed out, which is available for public consumption, I'd be happy to talk to anybody, a non-BAS retuning guide. So it's basically a very detailed guide on how to deploy data loggers in buildings without a building automation system to uh, answer questions like boiler reset, um, condenser water reset, fan cycling, zone temperatures. Um, so there's some kind of, some, there's some tools that are coming out to help us with that. So we do have this uh, YouTube guide on different, uh, from Fluke and, you know, the, the, the beauty is, is a lot of these manufacturers like Flute and Dent and Onset have YouTube channels. So you can learn how to use those tools there. Any other questions? Okay, so it's free. I hope you become a member. Um, and just check out a tool. If it's just a laser thermometer because you want to run around and take temperatures, that's fine. I'd just rather have you have this resource available for you. Also, a lot of you, especially service providers, have these tools, but they may be used on another project. So you need, you know, we're here to supplement your inventory. There we go. So any, any other questions about that? Uh, all, if you, and if there's tools, uh, the other thing I wanted to mention, if there's something that um, we don't have. Um, I've had a lot of requests recently for compressed air tool. Anybody work with compressed air systems, like industrial compressed air? Uh, both Flexum and GE now have ultrasonic uh, compressed airflow tools. So exterior, non-intrusive, attached to the outside of the time. They're about $20,000. I'd really like one. I just got to find a sponsor um, to help us buy one. So, um, so if there's tools that we don't have that you think would be valuable in the library, let me know. I've got my wish list, and we're constantly looking for sponsorship and monies to expand our library. Okay, so that's the library piece. So that's a, that's a resource that's available to you. I will help you in applying those tools, get them to you. Um, also help you with some of the data analysis. If anybody's used a data logger before, you know that there's a lot of numbers. And it's kind of hard to tell the story sometimes. And so um, has anybody used Ecamm? I know the City Light folks. So there's some, some Excel spreadsheet tools. There's some analysis tools out there. And I can help you kind of use those tools to help tell the story. 